Data nerds, I found a pretty big problem in the data science industry. And well, let me show you. In my last video, I built an app that analyzed data analyst job posts in the United States for top skills and salary. With the app, data analysts can focus on learning top skills like SQL and Excel as their most common in job postings. So after building this, I was curious, how do these skills stack up to what the internet is suggesting? And well, I was in for an awakening. Some sites were recommending outdated skills that weren't even close to being in my top 10. Others were suggesting a skill was number one, while conveniently also selling you this skill. Those with access to the most valuable insights provided skills that could be applied to any job. And although a lot of the sites did have skills that matched up with the job posting data, none of these sites had any sort of data to back up their claim for this. Hold up, stop the music. How can a site recommend a top skill to a data analyst without providing any evidence to that claim? I mean, the whole job of a data analyst is to provide data to support a claim. Super ironic. And this is all personally upsetting to me because whenever I first started as a data analyst, I was recommended to learn the skill of Microsoft Access from one of these sites. I spent weeks trying to learn Access and I came to find out afterwards that there were not only more powerful, but more popular tools that Microsoft was actively trying to replace Access with. So basically, I wasted weeks of my life learning an unnecessary tool. And if it's this bad for data analysts, what about for data scientists or data engineers? Well, there's a solution I like to model after that's a survey done by the popular developer site, Stack Overflow. Now, if you're not familiar with Stack Overflow, it's a site that's primarily used to get you help with popular tools like Python, SQL, surprisingly even Excel. And they poll their users annually to find the most popular skills like programming, SQL databases, and cloud platforms, along with going as far as telling you salary for top jobs in the developer industry. And this survey is extremely valuable valuable for aspiring developers in order to identify the skills that they need to know. Most all online education sites for programmers even go as far as to quote the results from the survey to showcase what skills you should learn. But as great as the survey is for developers, it's not so good for data nerds who comprise less than 15% of the respondents of this survey. And because of this low hmm. percentage, it's hard for data nerds to extract Ugh. value of what skills they should be learning. So what about that previous app that I built for my subscribers? Well, the first major problem is that this data is only for data analysts in the United States. And my subscribers aren't just data analysts and are from around the world. So we need to collect data that supports this. The second and actually bigger problem is that I keep on getting these emails saying that my app is crashing. The app that I built is pretty poorly designed. As a test, I used an even larger data set with my current code and it took nearly an hour to generate a visualization. And we're gonna be processing a lot more data. I mean, you can tell from this clickbait title. That previous app that I built was only handling around 7,000 jobs at the time of filming this. So we need a completely new solution. So let's get into solving that first problem of collecting data beyond just data analysts in the United States. And we're gonna be still following a similar approach that I did before, which is using Python to connect to an API in order to extract this data into a database. And specifically using a service called SERP API to handle this. So typically, if you're trying to scrape this data from the website, they don't like this. They're gonna use methods to block you, such as those captures that even humans can't solve sometimes. So SERP API handles all of this and gets me the data that I need. So I was really surprised when I reached out to SERP API and asked for a few hundred thousand search credits that they agreed. So thanks to SERP API for supporting this. Editor Luke here looking like a hot mess. One quick note, this video is not sponsored, but I did want to be transparent about SERP API providing those free credits. My cloud bills are getting pretty high right now, so I am open to sponsors. So Google Cloud, hit me up. All right, back to Luke. But now this project is getting more complex. We're not only needing to search different job titles, we also need to search different locations. With this added complexity, we need a more robust solution. And frankly, this is a job for a data engineer. Somebody that specializes in moving data from point A to point B. What is up? Uh-oh. My headphones. So this is Ben. He's not only a former data engineer at Meta, but he also runs the YouTube channel over at Seattle Data Guy. So I started with showing him some Python code that I had written for my previous project to get his feedback. And well... So I'm putting all these exclamation points. Um, <laughs> um, uh, the exclamation points are funny. 
Um, <laughs> well, I, I, the logs are... I, I have... So we went over a plan to extract the data. So I would build on that initial plan. I would continue to use Python to call SERP API Hello? and get this data Wada. into our database. For this, I'm using a Wada. popular cloud-based solution of BigQuery from Google. Now these results from SERP API come in a JSON file, which isn't very usable. So then I could use SQL to unpack all of this Cleaning data. Time. Once we have this cleaned up in our data warehouse, we can then use our app to connect to this data. <laughs> now to make sure we were collecting job data daily and also cleaning it up, I'd use a popular data pipeline scheduler called Airflow. This tool allows you to write jobs in Python to run any number of tasks while also controlling the order. I think this is good. I think the big thing with a lot of these things is always simplify, like don't try to kill yourself. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> well which is exactly what I didn't do. And this project took way longer than my normal videos. But let's focus on the positives. So I started with the data collection first, building out a Python script in Airflow to collect not only all those job titles via search term, but also all those different search locations. For collecting jobs from around the world, I decided to dig into my YouTube channel analytics to find the countries my subscribers come from, which is a lot of dang countries. So after the collection pipeline was built, it was now time to dive into cleaning the data. For this portion, I just focused on exchange extracting yeah. all that data from those JSON files into our main data table, or as data nerds call it, a fact table that has a ton of key information in each column for all of those different job postings. All right, so we're not completely done with the data cleanup just yet, but we need to perform some EDA first to see what we're working with. Let's see how big this table is as we're collecting around 6,000 jobs per day. Querying it, we can see we have around 380,000 jobs, which may be different from what you see down here in the title. Future Luke is supposed to be automating this title update so that way it matches the number of jobs in our database. Next, let's look at where all these job postings are coming from. And it looks like an overwhelming majority are from LinkedIn, which also checks with what the majority of my subscribers say they use. So let's do some comparisons of these postings. I'm curious to find out what is the most in-demand job right now. Now, back in 2012, Harvard Business Review released this article on data scientists, claiming it was the sexiest job of the 21st century, Please. and talked about the need for this profession as this field began to explode. And so I'm curious, is data scientist still the most popular job? Well, not anymore. It looks like data engineers have an overwhelming majority with many companies requesting this. But I mean, this makes sense because look at this data project that I'm doing right now. It required data engineering to get the data I needed to perform this analysis. Oh, and it looks like those authors released an updated article last year where they captured this about data engineers. But sadly, they left out data analysts. Let's look at another hot topic for my data nerds, and that's whether job postings have any mention of a degree in it. This topic has really intensified by Google's release of the data analytics certificate that claimed they would accept this certificate over a four-year degree. The Wall Street Journal investigated the need for degrees and found that the pandemic has helped blue-collar workers transition more easily into tech-based careers without a degree, with IT and data processing being one of the most common industries for career transitioners. Lucky for us, the data set includes information on whether a degree is mentioned in the job posting. And looking at it right here, we can see that for every one in three job postings for data engineers and analysts, they have no mention of a degree, which I think is a pretty high number. Unfortunately for data scientists, this was only found in a severely low 7%. All right, All right. speed round. Here's some other interesting insights. Less than 10% of job postings are flagged for remote work with data analysts at the lowest around 6%. For job locations, we have an assortment from around the world with anywhere being the highest, which correlates to all those remote work jobs that we previously found. Finally, for the different type of jobs offered, it seems like it's not even close as most all opportunities in this industry are focused on full-time jobs, which is really disheartening because things like internships, and contract opportunities are really great at getting those with low experience, experience. So what about salary and skills for data nerds? You know, the whole point that you're watching this video. Well, inspecting the salary, we can see that it comes in this crazy format. Sometimes it's yearly, other times it's hourly, sometimes it's a range, sometimes it's not. For the skills, they're buried deep in the job descriptions. So we need to develop a way to extract these keywords out. Both of these issues to fix will be classified under NLP or natural language processing. Wrong way natural language processing. I never know which way to go. Simply put, it's a way for computers to process human language. We've come a long way with NLP as witnessed by ChatGBT. So what tool should we use for this processing? Well, SQL is a little too structured for what we need. And from that Python example that I showed earlier, it took nearly an hour to generate a visualization on a single computer. But that's a single computer. What happens if we used multiple computers. It turns out there's a tool specifically designed for this called Apache Spark. Now when a pack of wild computers band together, 
they form a spark cluster. Look how cute this little guy is. And these guys are great at fighting against big data. Fight. Now how and where do you even run these spark clusters? Well, most all cloud providers <laughs> offer this. Hey. And they're more than happy then to take your money so to offer this service. Now the framework for Apache Spark is written in Scala. But because it's such a popular tool, they offer APIs to interact with this framework, including Python. Which is conveniently named PySpark. So I've never used PySpark before, but it was pretty easy to figure out as it's very similar to Pandas. For this, I have Airflow, spin up a Spark cluster daily, and then import all those new job entries into it. From there, I focus on the salary column first, extracting information like the minimum, maximum, and average. I even plotted this chart to check my results. Next up is the hard part of extracting the skills. I found that the best way to handle this was to provide the cluster with a list of skills to find and then extract from the job description. To get this list was pretty painful. I went through and did a count of all the popular words in the job descriptions and handpicked out all these tools. After I went through a few hundred common words specific to data science, I then added to this list all those skills from the Stack Overflow survey. In total, we have a total of 250 words specific to data nerds. I'm like 99% sure we got all the keywords that we need, but in the future, we're probably gonna have to develop some sort of machine learning algorithm to extract these keywords in a better method. So now we're finally done with the cleaning. We use a Spark cluster to not only generate all that clean salary data, but also to extract all those skills for each job posting. All right, so now let's jump into exploring those newly cleaned salary and skill columns. First, let's look at the average salary by the different job search terms. Now I have a bad feeling about using an mm. average for this. You see, recently there have been laws imposed in states like New York and California that require salaries be listed on job postings. There's just one big problem. Companies are listing very wide ranges for salaries in order to satisfy this requirement. So let's inspect some of these ranges. And it looks like data scientists are the biggest offender at $350,000 for a range. And not only are these job postings coming from states like New York and California, but they're also from popular tech companies. And surprisingly, this $350,000 range isn't really that bad. On comprehensive.io, a salary tracking website, they found a data engineering role with a $750,000 variance at Netflix, along with this crazy range for a data analyst role. Now, because of these large ranges in the data set, averages may not be the best for this. Instead, we're gonna be using medians. Not that median, this type of median, which evaluating on this, salaries aren't skewed as high due to those large ranges. And also they check better with salary aggregation sites like Glassdoor. Now I'm also curious, just for fun, what is the highest and lowest salaries based on these large ranges of these companies. For the highest, a data analyst takes the win at $800,000. For the lowest, a data analyst also takes the win with this at 25,000. I even found this internship at $8 an hour. So sort of crazy that data analysts have both the highest and lowest salaries. All right, let's now get into exploring those skills. And for this, we're gonna be using the app that I built with the same Python framework of Streamlip that I used on my past app. But instead of using Python on a single computer to aggregate all this data on the front end, we're now using the power of multiple computers to use SQL and PySpark to aggregate this data on the back end. Basically, that long extravagant storyline of how we cleaned up the data was done in order to provide this in an easily accessible manner via this app, which you can access via datanerd.tech. You can access it via your phone or even a web browser. So how should this be used? Well, let's say you're an aspiring data nerd and curious about the skills you should be focused on first to land a job. With the app, you can get real-time insights into what the top skills are being requested in job postings today. But this is for all data nerds. We can actually filter down further based on a job title. Let's look at data engineers first. For them, we can see SQL and Python are most important, along with cloud technologies. Looking at data scientists next, we can see that Python and SQL are still important, but so are other tools such as R and Tableau. Oh yeah, about this percentage. So out of 22,000 job postings for data scientists, 17,000 list the skill of Python, or basically, Three out of four data scientist jobs are requesting this. Finally, with data analysts, we can see that clearly SQL is the most important, followed by spreadsheets, programming languages, and viz tools. We can even filter this further to see how things like languages or even cloud technologies compare. Now remember, we do have all of that salary data, and because it's linked to these skills, we can then go through and actually find out how much you get paid based on a certain skill. 
So let's actually find out what would I get paid for the skills that I used in this project. So let's first filter down by my job title of data analyst. We can look at languages, which we use SQL and Python, paying around $90,000. For cloud technologies, we use Google Cloud and specifically BigQuery, which is around $111,000. For libraries, we use both Airflow and Spark, which have some of the highest and also lowest salaries in this one. So based on these skills that I know and used, I feel like I can get a better representation of what my potential salary could be. Now, I obviously didn't leave out a salary comparator between between all the different job titles, so that's available as well. And you can see both the annual and hourly rate. All right, so this is all pretty crazy. We're able to now have a website that data nerds can go to in order to find out what are the top skills they need to learn for their jobs based on actual data from job descriptions on what skills are being requested. I'm looking forward to continue to collect this data over the year and then compare this and see how skills and also salary track over time. I'm always open to feedback and improvements for this website. So if you have any ideas to make this website more accessible to others, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. All right, as always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.